Welcome to Any Way You Slice It, where we talk about your identity and purpose in the kingdom of God. Come join author Ricardo Richardson as we slice our way to the core of God's Word to experience the beautiful and transformational discovery of who we are and why we exist, no matter how we slice it. Today's message is slander. Beloved family, our text says, Whoever secretly slanders his neighbor, him I will silence. I will not endure one who has a haughty look and an arrogant heart. My eye shall be upon the faithful of the Lord, that they may dwell with me. One who walks in a blameless way is one who will serve me. One who practices deceit shall not dwell within my house. One who speaks lies shall not maintain his position before me. Psalms 101, 5-7 I have been holding this seed in my hand, and now it's time to plant it. The Lord hates slander. I want to deal with this spirit today because it is one that goes unnoticed in the world and in the body of believers. Many of us know that God said, do not lie. But God also said, do not bear false witness, as in slander. Do not call anyone a fool because you will be subject to judgment. But listen, what the command is saying though, is even though you know them to be a fool, you still don't call them a fool because now you are slandering the person. And God calls this sin. There is a difference between lying on someone and slander. Lying is not telling the truth. But slander is hearsay or telling what you believe to be the truth in order to defame the person or put them in a negative light. Let's deal with the spirit of slander. Slander is the sharing of speculation or hearsay about someone that results in a negative depiction of another person and a decline in their reputation. This can result in broken friendship, divided families, and fractures among a community. Slander is a spirit that is so subtle yet dangerous to so many people in the world. There is an evil motive and intent behind this dangerous speech. Ah, yes, you heard that correctly. Slander is so dangerous in some places of the world, it is considered a crime. Well, in the United States, one can seek financial damages for slander or defamation of character. But in countries like kingdoms, slander is much more criminal. For example, in Belgium, slandering or offending the king is a crime under an 1847 law that has a penalty of up to three years in prison. Slandering members of the royal family tree can bring a maximum penalty of two years in prison. But listen, family, in the kingdom of God, slandering is also dangerous. But I say to you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, you fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. Matthew 5, 22. Those are the words of King Jesus Christ. Raka actually means a worthless, empty-headed man, a brainless idiot, foolish and witless. Don't you know that man was made in God's image? Yet by slandering other people, you slander the image of God. There is a particular scene in the Bible in Mark 3, where Jesus has just performed a miracle. A demon-possessed man was brought to Jesus, and the Lord cast the demon out, healing the man of blindness and muteness. The eyewitnesses to the exorcism began to wonder if Jesus was indeed the Messiah they had been waiting for. A group of Pharisees looking by, hearing the talk of the Messiah, quickly wanted to discourage any budding faith of the crowd. So they began to slander the name of the Lord. It is only by Beelzebub, the prince of demons, that this fellow drives out demons, they said. Matthew 12, 24. Jesus rebuts the Pharisees' slander by stating something simple and logical regarding a house being divided that cannot stand. How can Satan cast out Satan, he says. I am not casting out Satan by the power of Satan. That's nonsense. Listen to this next statement about blasphemy and slander. 
I tell you, says Christ, every kind of sin and slander can be forgiven. But blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven. But anyone who speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. Either this age or the age to come. Matthew 12, 31 to 32. Okay, if someone continues to operate in the spirit of slandering the Holy Spirit of God, as the Pharisees did to Jesus, then that person can never be drawn by that same Holy Spirit that they slander. He, the Holy Spirit, is the only one who draws men to God to have them redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. So if you slander the one responsible for convicting your heart to come to Jesus Christ to receive his blood in order for the Father to forgive and pardon you, then as they say in the Bahamas, you're locked. That means you are done, finished, locked between a rock and a hard place and locked out of the kingdom. This is another way of saying that their sin would never be forgiven ever, 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 ever. Not now, not in eternity. That's like the judgment against Satan and his imps. I wonder if when they rebelled against God, they slander and blaspheme the Holy Spirit of God. Ah, uh, just food for thought. Yes, the spirit of slander is a dangerous spirit that some of us have experienced. Even as I sow this seed, there are people slandering my name, accusing me of all manner of wrong in order to make themselves look good. When they get around some people that don't know their character, they start slandering other people. But I pray, Lord, you deal with them. Charge it against them or don't charge it against them. You decide. I'm being real with you all today. Yes, I can say, oh, I'm praying for them. Lord, bless them indeed. But I am confessing like David right now. Lord, you deal with all these devils the way you want to deal with them. Until they repent. See, I can vent to God. I do it all the time. But I stop at slandering others that slander me. God, you deal with them. Let me be clear. You can slander just as you can commit other sins and be forgiven or pardoned. The only unpardonable sin today is the state of continued unbelief. One who refuses to accept Christ and the truth of God. The Holy Spirit currently convicts this unsaved world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. John 16, 8. But to continually resist that conviction and to willfully remain unrepentant is, quote, blaspheming the Holy Spirit, unquote. In this case, family, there is no pardon from the righteous judge, either in this age or the age to come, for a person who rejects the Spirit's prompting to trust and believe in Jesus Christ. They will then die in sin and disbelief. The choice is clear. Stop all sin and slander and trust in Christ. First Peter 2 says, So put away all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander. And King Jesus Christ said, the final word on slander. He says in Matthew 12, I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will give an account for every careless word they speak. So have a good conscience, so that when you are slandered, those who slander and revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. Much love.